October 18th, 1985. A watershed day in North American video game history. A Japanese video game giant, looking to revive what was thought to have been a long dead industry in North America, ignored the naysayers and brought a redesigned version of their top selling console from Japan to American shores, starting with a small test launch in New York City. The rest, as they say, is history. On the heels of that small yet successful debut, the Nintendo Entertainment System would be unleashed nationwide the following spring, and quickly became a phenomenon that gave new life to a once profitable video game console market just three years removed from collapsing under its own weight. Not surprisingly, Nintendo's success would attract a couple of competitors looking to grab a share of the resurgent western console market for themselves. There was Atari who saw the industry at once dominated coming back to life and wanted back in. First by finally releasing its long-delayed 7800 Pro system console in 1986. Sadly, while it had some solid specifications, a game library consisting mostly of badly dated titles, combined with a sporadic release schedule over the following months that caused many to question the company's actual commitment to the platform, essentially reduced it to a non-factor. If having just one system competing with Nintendo wasn't enough, Atari also had their XE game system on the market at the same time. Only this one tried to be both a computer platform and a dedicated cartridge console simultaneously. Sufficient to say, despite its claim to offer more than what the NES could, it wasn't any more successful in its efforts either. While Atari was failing in its two-pronged approach, another challenger from Japan was also making its way across the Pacific Ocean looking to stake their claim in the revitalized US market. One that had already locked horns with the growing Nintendo behemoth in its native land. Around the time of the NES's New York launch, Sega debuted their Mark III console in Japan, so named for being the third iteration of their SG-1000 platform, and it was thrust in direct competition with Nintendo's top-selling Famicom. While the Mark III boasted superior technical capabilities over its rival, it couldn't make a dent over the foothold Nintendo held over the land of the rising sun. Undaunted, Sega looked to the resurgent US market as the next best hope for the struggling Mark III. After giving the console a cosmetic makeover to make it more appealing to American consumers, along with a new moniker, Sega unveiled their entry in the US console market at the 1986 Summer Consumer Electronics Show in Chicago. The following September, the Sega Master System was officially released in North America, and on the surface appeared to have the goods needed to give Nintendo its first real challenge for the American video game crown. Whether it would actually succeed is another matter, but nonetheless this is where our story begins. Sega Masters will be a game-by-game -game chronology of the Master System's history in the Western market, starting from the console's US launch in 1986. The focus will initially be on Sega's North American library, before eventually pivoting to other regions of the world where the console was not only far more successful, but actually thrived well into the 1990s. And that journey kicks off with the next episode.